Hey guys. All right, so I am doing another great walks today. And yeah, 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 my side birds are hanging out. Anyway, I know I said that I wasn't going to do any more because the temperatures are extremely hot, but I've got an early start this morning. And so far the temperatures are good. I'm at a new park that I haven't ever been to before. I was uh, looking for a close by trail that I could hike because I'm still trying to make the 25,000 steps which I haven't been doing for the past couple days and I came across this particular trail it's here in Reiko and it is at the Reynolds Creek Park and um, because it's close by I got to come to it myself I didn't need hubby so um we're going to go on ahead and get started and check this place out and we'll just see how far the trail is because it's not on the all trails app or anything um but there was photos took of it and it got like four and a half stars from a lot of different campers and stuff so i'll go on ahead and give you details as we go let me show you this little sign right here So, I don't know how long the trail is, I don't know what sights we'll see or anything. We're just going to ring it since it wasn't on the All Trails app and I couldn't do any, uh, couldn't do anything about it, you know, I couldn't look it up and get history on it or nothing. Look here, that's beautiful. I've heard of people painting rocks and leaving them behind for others to see. I've heard of that. Anyway, so we will see where this goes and whatnot. I've got a feeling it's not that long of a trail because the park didn't look that big when I drove through. They do have a, um, um, it hardly even looks like the trail, does it? They, uh, when you drive through, there is a an office, but because of the virus going on, um, no one was in the office, but you could still come in. And the opening hours, I think I saw was 10 to um, 6. So the hours are even short. Now, this is a very on done trail I guess you just gotta walk it at your own it's possible that people's overlooked it and you can barely make out that it's a trail anyway um, I saw that they have got an area where you can ride horses there is an equestrian area and it's also a marina um, they've also got, um, wow, this is really unkept, folks. There's a little bit of a walk through around here. People hasn't walked this. As you can see, it's really not kept up. People hasn't walked it. Wow. Even ribs all over the place. I don't like morning ribs. <laughs> they feel so funny. Anyway. Um. There's, I. I, but I saw in photos that people took, there are um, uh, picnic tables as well. Boy, it's a shame that this trail has gone up. It's like nobody. And it says plainly on the sign, 
to stay on the trail, but a little hard to stay on a trail that you can't make out. And a whole bunch of cacti. I reckon maybe this this park is bustling a lot better than this. Like, but the really sad thing is, like, it's not really on the map. I mean, it is, but it isn't. I'm going to see if I can get it on the All Trails app. I don't quite know how I can go about that. Um, I might not be able to even get it on the All Trails. But, um... It somewhat looks like a trail. It just it hasn't been walked on for a while. Oh, that is a very nice juniper right there. It's a big one. Does appear that there's nice shading here and um, uh, the sign, the park sign. It is. It was done by the. Corps of Engineers, so, um, I got cobweb hanging on my tripod here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm running into the morning ribs. Ah! <laughs> oh, wow. I used to hate that when me and my ex would go herbing, and sometimes I'd be in front of him. And I'd catch those morning ribs. I'd hold my sack and mattock out in front of me to catch the ribs. Now we've got markers here. So the other one that I had seen was six. So I don't know exactly what the what that means. They've also got a yellow ribbon on this. So maybe this is what's called the yellow trail. But because there wasn't anybody in the office, of course, I couldn't get a map if they had one. So I don't know. Ah! <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm catching the ribs. This might end up being a decently long trail, but like I said, because we're already at the road over there. So it's just according. Oh, we got a rib here that has got, I don't even know if you can see that. It's got something in the center of it. I don't think you can see it. Anyway, I hate disturbing the ladies in their ribs. I really do because you know, they're just, they're making a living. That's right, I said ladies. If you don't know, the males don't necessarily make ribs, not nests. And the females eat them. So, you know, on the whole part, it's always the female against the male. But it's the females that makes the nests. They're the ones that makes the ribs. The pretty little ribs that you see that's circular and catches the bugs. Yeah, it's the females on the whole part of any kind of spider. But so far I haven't seen any spiders, just the rebs. Most generally they make their reb at night where they can catch the gnats, mosquitoes, whatnots. And then in the morning they uh this here's a deer trail. In the morning, the spiders probably go wherever their rib is attached to and wait until evening time again. I'm also having to make sure to watch for any uh, snakes. But what I've seen on Facebook, my friends in Kentucky has been seeing a lot of snakes this year. But so far, I haven't seen any here in Texas. Praise God. I haven't run into very many snakes here in Texas. 
Not very many at all. It doesn't mean they're not here though. All right, we've got a pond over here. It's a very interesting pond. It looks clean and fresh actually. And there's a lot of log in it, which would help keep it clean. It's not a bad looking pond. I hear voices. More than likely there's fish in it. Alright. So, let's move on and see what else we can see on this trail. Well, they've even provided a little bench over here, which is interesting. Now, I've got little things on my socks here. My dog loves these things. They're, they're tiny little flat burrs. And for some reason, she can really smell them. As soon as I come in through the door, she can smell them. And she starts trying to get them off my clothes. She starts chewing them off. Really interesting. So, okay. As I said, they've got the bench here. It's kind of fascinating in a way that this trail isn't necessarily um, maintained, so to speak. But now they've got an orange ribbon up there. But at the same time, it is walkable. It probably would make a big difference if people would walk it more often. Now here's another rock that had been painted and left behind. That one's got a bunch of stars on it. Now I understand that if like anybody who comes across a painted rock, they can go on ahead and take them, but it's kind to go on ahead and um, it looks like this actually dead ends here um, and so we've got like a river ravine and stuff over here anyway it's nice for you to turn around and return the favor and paint a rock and leave it in, by, in its place so there's the feeder And it goes on into the pond. Now across there, you've got your campsites. You can barely see it. So this might be the end of the trail. We'll see if there's any other trail. But I'm kind of doubting it because on the other side is the road. So, yeah, this might be a really short trail nothing much to really hike on but it said that's a, a hiking biking trail so I do not know it's um rather odd and where it's not marked all that well you don't know where you're going with it or where it's heading you don't know anything I'm gonna look around and see if there's any other ends to this that goes anywhere else and uh, I'll get back with you to tell you what I discovered okay apparently here's another part of the trail and here's a bridge so let's see where we go on this I know a lot of you are probably thinking well, seeing that the trail isn't walked very much, that bridge might not be good, but it's actually very solid. A little hard to understand, though, there being a bridge there and no real trail to speak of afterwards. It is very odd. They've let this place go, is what they've done. They've let it go. 
so more or less we're exploring now folks which is fine with me I'm used to this kind of thing this is a little bit more interesting strange enough there is gravel in areas There's markings of an old trail here that apparently has been forgotten. Very forgotten. I'm having to do some ducking and stuff underneath the trees. That is a crying shame about this trail. It's not been walked on to keep the weeds down and the maintenance hasn't come through to uh, there's a bottle over there so people have been through here but it's hard to tell how long ago um this is really grown up here I don't think it goes on down, even though it looks like it goes on across. Yeah, um, it's kind of a shame that uh, this hasn't been maintained. Maybe there wasn't any interest in it. I don't know. Okay, we're going to turn around and I'll get back with you with what else I might find. I want you to see this. It's just a big old patch of the raw prairie grass. And it goes out right in there. So one of the pictures that I had seen showed a trail that was actually mowed out. Um, I don't know if that was on the equestrian or what. So I'm going to work my way out of here and I am going to drive out the other end of the camp area and see if there are trails on that side and then I'm going to check out the equestrian. I'll be back with you. I will have you take notice of these beautiful beautiful flowers, the purples and the yellows. A very beautiful patch right here. Here's the marker yellow six. I really don't know what significance that has. I really don't. This trail is not took care of. Anyway, I'll get back with you. Okay, I'm here at the equestrian area now. Um, in the campsites, I noticed that they did have a bathroom. It possibly has showers. Now, here at the equestrian area, they've got sheltered corrals that you can shelter your horses in. I think they're actually covered, so that's good. And there's a bathroom over there. And, um, kind of like a, uh, some kind of a shelter there. They've got a fire pit over here. Here, they've got all kinds of, uh, tie posts. And over there is a water trough. So it's definitely set up for horses. More than likely you have to have a permit to be able to use this, but I wouldn't know. Um, I do know that there's reservations for campsites. Uh, I did see a sign that showed a trail map. Also said to, uh, share and yield so uh, we've got a sign over here but first 
I'm going to um, it's possible that this is an enquete trail as well we'll see I'm going to read what uh, this map up here says um, we'll see what we see no horses beyond this point there's picnic tables here underneath the trees. Oh, they've got a map there that you can get. That's nice. All right, so. Entrance to Lake Rico Trails. Let me go this up here for you. Lacey Point entrance to Lake Rico Trails. I have no idea. That might have been where I was at. I don't know. So, as you can see here, it says share the trail. Hikers yield to horses and bikers yield to hikers and horseback riders. So, um, says hike and bike with friend for safety, carry a cell phone for emergencies, stay on trail and roads, do not disturb animals or plants, be aware of briars, poison ivy, high water, leave no trace, pick it up and pack it out. Yep. So over here is the equestrian area where we're at and uh, the trail gateway um, okay this right here is Lake Rako this is uh, Spiegelville I went through there to try to find the trails and didn't find any trail. So, um, but we've got this here and it looks like it's a pretty big trail. So we might be in luck. It starts there, goes along the tree line and in. Let's see if there's any copies in this container over here. That way we can use that. Shame it's not color coded, but it's better than nothing, right? They've been there for a while. Boy, I tell you. All right, we will resort to this map when necessary. Let's go on ahead and get started. Got stuff in my tennis shoes from that other trail. That's a shame about that other trail. It basically just goes down to the pond. I guess maybe at one point it was used to get down to the pond if you wasn't a camper. So there you have it. And it is majorly grown over. So we'll just walk through the grass for now maybe eventually we'll see that there's actually a trail I mean it shows it goes out like that very primitive uh, map <laughs> no color well I see this mowed out a little bit out there so I guess that's where we're heading who knows what it looks like from that point on 
we might actually be able to find an even better trail than what we was on. Uh, I've got stuff in my shoes from that other trail. You know, it's a shame. I have gone, I think, I'm not positive, maybe just one part, but nonetheless, uh, you know, during this thing that's going on, um, you would think they would at least maintain their park. I mean, it's open. They've got the gates open. So why can't they, like, take time out to freshen up the trails or something? Seriously. The park that I went to, you know, is a Christian center, but that woman was hard at work keeping it up. I can only imagine what the state parks might look like. But who knows, and being state parks, they probably take better care. And I'm not putting this place down, not by any means. <laughs> Just, um, I don't know. Uh, it's just kind of sad that it's a little hard to make out the trails not everybody is here to camp or to boat you know and i can see that the they do have somewhat of mowed out area right there and it kind of hightails it over to the parking area which will be good it'll be good for me to uh get back to the car there's still no um, mention of how long this is but what I can tell uh, more or less it's kind of a, a loop or at least an out and back so there are some old hoof prints through here Um, so we are now kind of inside we should be coming up to a bridge so at least this one is a little bit more uh, visual than the one that we just went through. Beautiful patch of lilac colored flowers there. Anyway, um, I do notice that the parks that's around in this vicinity uh, aren't as well maintained as other parks. Like my favorite park is very well maintained, but it's also very heavily trafficked. Um, the ones that's closer around in this area don't get as much uh, traffic, so to speak. And maybe that's the reason why they're not maintained as much. But at least there are areas that a person can go to without having to travel forever the parks that i've been taking used to are like an hour hour and a half two hours two and a half hours away so i've done a lot of traveling to get these parks out to you folks and um they're always fascinating in some way or fashion. In some way, they're always interesting. Somehow. 
I always find something that's different from the last part that you've seen. Always. This is another one of those that I have found that is different from the others. Hearted about that trail that went to the pond. I am. I'm really broken hearted about it. I really am. I mean, I didn't mind the exploration, you know. I like exploring like that. I really do. Uh, even when I lived in Kentucky and I would go herbing if I went alone and I saw a trail that was possibly. A foot trail but knowing it was a deer trail I would follow it to see where it went it was always interesting to me and me just going to go dig roots yeah not too awful long ago there was a horse through here it's broken down enough for it to be hay but it wasn't too long ago ran into some more morning ribs there so so far I'm still looking for the bridge that's on there I don't know anyway um, when I see something I'll definitely get to you This is a very nice place to ride a horse. Serious. This is nice. Um, I did find some mileage put down for some of the trails. Like the main loop is four miles. And then like, okay, we're here at the bridge. The uh, inner loop is two miles and then there's one outside of the main loop that's 1.3 so there's a little bit of mileage here look there i hope that you caught that before i did i hope you did that was a big bird <laughs> So here we've got a creek, we've got a bunch of minnows. And there's a big old little, a big old, oh boy, there's big fish here. Look at that. I don't even know if he's caught that fish. <laughs> there was two of them, two of them. I bet you didn't catch it. I probably didn't even have it right. And for some reason, this isn't really falling. It's just kind of sitting. It's mad. It's stagnant like. Nasty. I must have stirred something up stepping on this. This side is horrible. It's horrible. This side looks okay. Yeah, there's some decent sized fish here. And just sit, dangle the feet in the water and fish. I don't know if the big fish would bite, but they might would. I only saw two of them. I don't know what they were. They might have been cat, but I don't think so. And I don't know that they would have been bass either. I don't know what they were. So, yeah, that's sad. It's horrible. I, I, when I stepped on that, I must have stirred something up because those two fish took off flying like a banshee. At one time, this was asphalt. There's some old asphalt here. 
so maybe at one time this was an actual road and it got worn down and broken up and no more traffic and so they they attempted to put the map there as well anyway uh they decided to turn into an equestrian area only speculating all right so we've got a trail up here and out there let me look what it shows here at the bridge um i can go either way i can go either way uh looks like can't go out that way so they're talking about either up there or that Either way it goes, though, I would loop right back around. So, we'll go on ahead up this way. In that grassy area that was just mowed down, I ended up with some burrs on my socks. They hurt. <laughs> this is actually good here. Probably because they have done horseback riding. So it, more or less it's kind of kept it tamed. I don't think it's necessarily through maintenance. You have to consider horses would be similar to deer. And they would keep um the trail down pretty good well i guess either this is just marking a water vein or it's marking a trail there's no color code so there's no way of knowing but um this is cool um and i mean temperature wise it's cool the trees are nice they're comfortable and um it's level so far. Got some interesting trees here. Um, it's kind of dead through here too. But at the same time, it's, it's alive. Um, I reckon this area is probably prone to flooding. This, uh, does go out to Lake Rako. This does go out to Lake Rako and um, during flood season, which we didn't have flood season this time. Usually flood season is in February and March, but we didn't. Now I see that the creek is actually flowing that way, going out that way. It's got a decent little flow, so maybe it comes off of Lake Rico. Anyway, it would be prone to flooding because during flood season, Lake Rico does flood. So the creek would too. And that would explain all the dead wood around here. Um, if we would look close enough, we probably could even see the flood line. If we would look close enough. So, um, oh yeah, th this, uh, we went through that small little forest. We're coming back out into an opening, but it looks like we go back into a forest. Uh, it's really hard to tell which way they ride the horses most. Um, this is more of a narrow trail, but, um, it's still nice enough to ride a horse. And uh, if I see anything else, I'll get right back with you. Okay, we're coming across the little drainage crossing, which thankfully isn't flowing. There are some rocks that I would be able to walk on if it was, but not very many. So, all right. We've got a nice scenery here, it's rocky shore, but nice shading back in there. 
if anyone would run across the creek and just kind of hide in there somewhere maybe just have a picnic and blanket or something that would be nice the creek is flowing pretty good that actually looks refreshing almost good enough to step in you know, talking about stepping in I had already closed the video up on the equestrian trail Sunday and as I was trying to find my way out you already know that I had to cross one creek and there was rocks well there was another creek I had to cross and there wasn't any rocks none and I had to cross the creek I was so far in that I couldn't turn around and go back I was already overheated and exhausted good thing I still had water so I ended up having to walk right through that now you could tell that this is flooded right in here it's muddy but anyway um I had to wade through that creek it came up mid calf and the water felt good it really did it felt awesome it felt really awesome um, I almost wanted to just stay in the water because it felt so good but sadly enough I also had to step in the mud on either side of the shores because of course it is a crestrian trail therefore it was muddy from the horses so I had to let my tennis shoes dry out for a few days this is Saturday I allowed them to dry for a week uh, no I'm sorry this is Friday Friday nonetheless I let them dry out for a week I dusted them off this morning and <laughs> they were a mess but I got them decent they really need in the washer but they was already pretty dusty anyway because I went I'd gone walking a couple times at my favorite park and it's extremely dusty right now because we haven't had any r more rain for a few weeks so um yep and I didn't even catch that on film for you and, and I'm sorry but the water really did feel good <laughs> it's a shame I couldn't have walked through it barefooted it would have been even sweeter it was a good thing I was wearing my crops because at least I didn't get my pants wet, just my shoes and socks. And what's really sad, uh, you know how when you get your feet wet in your shoes, how it feels nasty and you just, you can't stand it. Well, where I'd been walking so much, I was so sweaty with my feet. I couldn't tell the difference between the sweat and the wet from the creek so yeah anyway <laughs> that was my little adventure after I'd already towed Jens by <laughs> the adventure continued after look at this giant patch I mean this is a giant patch of poison ivy actually it looks like it's trees but it's three leaves and the saying goes it might actually be summit summit or oak anyway it's poison the saying goes three leaves let it be so that's a big patch of it right there <laughs> I don't mess with anything that's got three leaves nothing anyway I will get back with you when there's something else to share. I want you to see this big tree that I caught while taking a break for a drink of water. It's not the biggest that I've caught by far, but it is big. Most of the time trees this big are already dead. It's very seldom that I find one this big that's still alive boy that's a strong rib 
I don't know what spider made that one, but it's strong. Anyway, this is no exception to the rule. This poor tree is gone too, unfortunately. But it got to be big. So anyway, continuing on. See the natural landscape that the water has hewn out? That's beautiful. Creek is still flowing. Which I don't understand. Why is it so stagnant on the other side of that bridge? And why isn't the water flowing underneath it when it is flowing so nice right here? I don't get it. I do not get it. I'll never understand water. I never will. Okay, I've caught over here something. Maybe it was someone's tent that got blown down in a storm or something. Or maybe it was a raft or something. Another can't make out what that is. Don't know what it is. Anyway, the trail so far is very easy to hike. It's pretty well level. I haven't had to do any climbs or anything like that. It's, it's relatively level. And um, so for anybody who doesn't necessarily mind walking on dirt and kind of watching their step over roots and rocks, but still can't necessarily climb uh, trees, or not trees, I'm sorry, I don't know, <laughs> climb trees. <laughs> can't necessarily climb slopes or whatnot. This is possibly a good trail for you. Um, as you could see, Although, uh, I, at the beginning it was somewhat grown up, but there's an old trash can, all bent. Possibly from the flood though, can't blame that on campers, more than likely from the flood. I've seen the damage floods can do, it's almost as bad as a tornado, almost, only caused by water. Anyway, um, as you could see at the beginning of the trail, it was grassy and you really couldn't make it out. But as you continued, and they do provide the paper maps, so um, it helps a lot. But deeper you get in, it is marked. The trails are marked. So there's signs and, and those pipes with the colored caps. So that's good, that, that's really good there. It's nice to know that they have maintained at least one set of trails. Um, it's still sad though about the first trail that I took you to. But maybe it didn't get that much traffic, who knows. And so they just went on ahead and figured it was cheaper to just let it go and maintain the equestrian trail. That's very much possible. Uh, it does cost money to maintain trails and whatnot, so that could just be it. We're not put them down too much, especially seeing that this trail's better. So, looks like water drains through here quite often. Either that or that's just the way the horses keep traveling <laughs> and they've made the ditch. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, if there is anything else to be caught, I will be sharing. There's a bee in that one thistle. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? There you go.
the trail's starting to get a little more narrow like it's possible that they walked along the other side more than this side but uh, kind of close to the road too right here well, supposedly we should end up in an area where we can actually see the lake well no not where I'm heading not where I'm heading we won't be seeing the lake where I'm heading so anyway uh, it brought back out but up here once again it's no room for it uh, it's hard to tell with these trails when they're and just how they're going to be walked on and stuff it's hard to tell let me get you a little bit of views here As you can see, we are among a bunch of cypress, but there's other forms of greens too, other trees and stuff. So it's not just all cypress here. Or junipers. It's not. All right. As we approach other areas, I'll get right back with you. There are some very beautiful flowers along the way. There's a lot of these lilac colored flowers around here. I really don't know what they are. But they're pretty. I think these are really gorgeous though. So, how that they're yellow on the tips and go red in the center. That's just so neat. That's beautiful. God was awesome in his creation, I tell you. And you'll never run out of variety. Because his imagination is bigger than all of ours combined. We'll never run out of variety. <laughs> anyway. Alright. Anything else? I'll get right back to you. Look here. This kind of looks like a cantaloupe vine almost don't know what it is it's some kind of an ivy some sort all right i'll get right back with you it's starting to heat up and i'm not really going through any shade but there's shade coming up here on the whole part this trail isn't very open it is um uh covered it's got plenty of shade and um, just on occasion you're exposed in an area with some sun. So it's more comfortable for uh, hot days like this. Um, but I do feel the heat rising <laughs> and I'm glad that this is just four miles. Um, by now I'd say I've already walked around two miles in it. So, um, but yeah, you could tell it, it is greatly for, forested. Um, there's a beautiful tree there, not just cypress or juniper. So we do have different kinds of trees here. There's a beautiful pine, an actual pine. That's a black pine. It's a black pine. Anyway, um, on the whole part, yeah, it's shaded. And it's still been easy to walk. It still hasn't been hilly or anything, so it's all right. Uh, if you would come here, I would recommend that you go to the equestrian area and don't go to the trail area that's in the camp areas because 
that trail is the trail that's not maintained but the equestrian trail seems to be just fine and it is marked so yep that's what I recommend <laughs> anyway I am enjoying this hike I am fresh scenery and didn't have to do a lot of traveling to get here which is good that's what I appreciate I like getting out further and seeing new places as well though but it's nice that I was able to do this today without requiring my husband uh, we're coming across another drainage area that's once again dry very narrow for the horses to get through right there all right we got just a little bit of a climb here it'd be interesting to actually walk down the drainage area right there but we won't hmm yeah we have come across the area where the yellow met with the orange once again see what their map shows here still pulling it out of my pocket so um it doesn't even say exactly oh you are here thank you all right um if y'all can see that i'm trying to it's a little up in the air so i'm right here creek cut right there there so uh the cougar pass is right there continue out continue out this way alrighty okay then um I'll get right back with you okay we've come to another point here and um over there is the cougar run yellow marker we're going straight. This is the paradise marker. So it's really good to see that they've got markers and maps and uh, signs so that you, you know where you're going. And it helps a lot. It makes a big difference, uh, especially if it's hard to read the map itself. And it's good to have the paper map. It's really good. But it helps a lot for them to have the trails themselves marked. Alright, so. According to this. Yeah, we go out that way. Or we can go out that way. Um, we'll go out this way because that also goes into Cougar Run. So we'll go out this way. Uh, it feels like there's another bear in my sock. Yeah, there's some gook in here. Uh, <sighs> I wish mountain boots were more comfortable because you don't get as much stuff in your shoe then. But they're not... They really get to be uncomfortable after a while. They don't put very much cushion in them. You would think they would, but they don't. Hmm. That had been burned. Someone was trying to start a forest fire or something. That's just wrong.
So this is a narrow, less rocked area, apparently. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, I got more shading and um, it's nice through here. This is another beautiful area, another beautiful scenery. Sorry about the banging. I've got my bottle out. I'm carrying it with me now. It, where it's getting hotter, I want the water to be on hand instead of me having to pull my backpack off. Makes it easier. So, uh, when I come across something of interest, I will be sharing with you. Okay, I'm here at an intersection. Field access. It reads out there paradise um let's see here um all right so we are here which points us actually at the cougar run no 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 i'm sorry we're right here right there and that's the blue bonnet trail and the cut through right out there i do not want to go out there i want to continue out this way but apparently a lot of people go out that way it looks like it because they want to see that but I don't want to get out in that. That's open with a lot of sunshine. That would be hot. So I'm going to stay through here where I've still got shading. And um, it's grown up. But it probably opens back up. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to travel out this side. That way um, it'd be nice to see the blue bonnet fields. But the blue bonnets are died down now. So there's not so much blue bonnet to even see now so anyway all right i'll get with you won't you see how this tree's forked <laughs> it kind of puts me in mind of those tall cacti it's got the arms that stick out do you know those things are dangerous those particular cactus and they uh the limbs get heavy and they fall well there was this guy um and it was really stupid him and his buddy was uh out in a cacti field somewhere in arizona or somewhere in the drier part of texas somewhere where the cacti grow and um and they're shooting on like they shot at this particular cactus and uh, the man was so proud of himself he ran over to look at his handiwork and where the arm was already heavy and him shooting holes through it uh, he got in the wrong position when he got to look at his handiwork and the arm fell off of the cactus and landed on him now mind you it's a very heavy arm for one those cacti gets very heavy branches and so the rate of the cactus laying on him and on top of that the spines sticking into him uh, <laughs> he died he literally died he died from the rate of that branch it was just that was stupid you know so yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> just wanted to tell you that and it's part of an urban legend but it was actually a true event it actually happened so anyway getting right back with you in a little bit oh and i've already gone over four miles that includes the trail that was neglected so 
I'll be coming out of this one before long. So anyway, I'll get right back with you in a little bit. I want you to see how this tree had grown. We've got some very interesting shaped trees. And once again, like all the other big trees, it's dead. But that one really, <laughs> I love how it branched out. No, it isn't dead. It's not dead. There is still some life in that old tree. It's not dead. There's some leaves up there on its branches. That's good to know. It's just a little dead on this side. But still, that is just so... That's almost the kind of tree that you wouldn't mind climbing. Honest. That's interesting. I love how it branched out. That's just so cool. That's cool. Okay, so I am here at an old boat ramp. I mean, it's been closed down for a long time. You can tell it's grown over and everything. It's just, it's not like it was. And, uh, but let's get up here to the water's edge. Somebody's out there pontooning. This is just part of Lake Rako, a very small part of it. Oh. Sorry, folks bird or something irritating my ankle. Anyway. I'm going to just give you a small look at this. Well, that boat ramp would have rent down deeper. We're right at the level that it is right now. But you wouldn't be able to launch a boat. It'd be too shallow. You'd have to drive your truck or car into the water to even get it down like that. But you can't drive in here anyway because uh, it's just, you can't. So, very beautiful waters out here. And like I said, it's part of Lake Rako. A very small area of it. Almost looks inviting to swim. Would be able to just because of this, you just fix yourself right up, wouldn't you? All right, let's go on ahead and get back onto the old trail. All right, I'm flushed, really flushed, seriously flushed. Um, rent, it, according to the map, it was supposed to make like a zag back in, and it didn't and somebody tore the map out and that's how I ended up getting you to the old boat ramp but there was also um, a blue bonnet field trail it had a cut through and that's where I'm at right now is on the cut through and I'll be able to get right back to that bridge that gets me right back out to the equestrian area so um I have to say, this park, uh, it could have a lot to do with what's going on right now and the reason why they haven't maintained it so much. Um, oh, that's a cool breeze. That feels awesome. Uh, the blue bonnet field had no shade. <laughs> that's hot. Anyway, um, the neglected trail was really a disappointment once again. I know I said that. Um, and this trail is okay up until the point where it comes to a point and they ripped the map out, whether it was the park itself or some hoodlum, I don't know. But, um, I couldn't find the zag back in to continue on the Paradise Orange Trail. But luckily the Bluefield, the Bluebell Trail had a cut through so it will take me directly to the bridge and I have to say like this park is nice in the fact that it's got 
camping areas and picnic areas and a marina and it does have a hiking trail and a equestrian area if you want to do that so it's got some activity going for it and it makes it okay but I have to put the trail system at maybe a three and a half star um, and maybe four at that but no more than four um, it's okay it's okay um, I'm exhausted I'm overheated but I've still got water so I'm not out <laughs> And um, I'm going to work my way right back to the car. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the scenes that I got to include. They're really nice. So um, at least it made it worth it. And I hope that you all enjoyed it. I appreciate you all. You all are awesome and terrific. And if you're new to this channel, this is the first time viewing, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any other videos that I bring at you. And I appreciate you too. And I just want to thank you for all the support that I get from you. It's my friends and mom and, and uh, monetized support and stuff. Um, just thank you. I appreciate you all. I love you and you all have a great day. I would like to thank all my supporters on Patreon and BitChute. The funds are greatly appreciated and they go towards supporting the great walks where I show off parks and attractions. If you would like to be a supporter also, then you can do so through Patreon. The links are left below the videos in the description box. Or if you would like to on BitChute, you can do so by subscribing to me on BitChute and go through PayPal. And I thank you in advance.